My name is Scott Stortz. I am the PLM Application Consultant here at Synergist. I've been in this role now for almost four years. Prior to joining Synergist, I was an engineer for about 20 years, and I did a lot of work with data management solutions, and most recently, my previous employer implemented a PLM system on top of data management, you know, and kind of took advantage of that system, and, and that's what led me to my position here. And, I hope this presentation today will give you some insight of how you can do something similar with if you have Vault today or considering Vault and possibly adding uh, Fusion Lifecycle on top of Vault. So with that, I got started. So Vault, your, your product data management solution, Vault, that is, I'm sure most people on the line probably are using Vault today or at least familiar with Vault, and that's where you're storing and controlling your, your CAD models, drawings, and you have functionality in Vault that allows you to do things like copy design and utilize the job processor to do some additional processing of that data. But how is your company managing other business processes or the more comprehensive business processes such as new product introduction, uh, bills of materials, your change management process, and, and quality management? You know, what, what are you doing with those? Are those areas where you feel you could expand those or, or do a better job managing those overall business processes? And that's where a system like Fusion Lifecycle comes into play. Fusion Lifecycle is a PLM, you know, product lifecycle management tool. It has purpose-built functionality to allow you to manage these processes such as new product introduction, change management, quality, uh, and supplier management. But you know, so Fusion Lifecycle manages that, but your data is still in Vault. So what we're here to talk about today is taking advantage of connecting your Vault data and bringing some of that Vault data into Fusion Lifecycle to really allow you to comprehensively manage those business processes that we've talked about. Just to clarify and set some baseline understandings, product data management, when we use the term product data management, we're referring to Vault. But more above and beyond that, what is product data management? It's really an engineering-focused tool. It's managing engineering data, it's, it's owned by engineering typically, and it's directly integrated with your CAD authoring tools. And what's the difference, what's product lifecycle management? Product lifecycle management really is more of a business process management tool that, that takes a look from the very beginning to the very end of your product lifecycle, from its very in, initial inception to its end of life. Uh, it's connecting the people, the data, and the processes that go around that entire product life cycle itself. And one of the, the big distinctions that hopefully you'll see throughout this presentation is, you know, product life cycle, fusion life cycle, the Autodesk version of PLM is an easy to use system that helps to automate those processes. You know, sim simplicity, accessibility, and flexibility are, are some of the key benefits of, of adding fusion life cycle into your product portfolio. So when we look across the middle of the screen here, you're seeing some basic uh, life cycle states that are typical of a product. You know, these aren't you know, say stage gates or anything like that, but a typical product goes through states such as, you know, the early on the specification state, then from there it goes on to engineering or a product development type state, and then often companies will do a pre-production type run and then full production and then on to service and end of life type scenario. And throughout that, that life cycle, there's different systems that get involved at, at most companies. You know, engineering, I'm sure most people on the phone are familiar, again, Vault, your PDM system, your CAD tools, that's where you're creating your drawings, uh, your CAD structure, that type of information is getting generated primarily within that state of your product life cycle. Outside of that state, you know, we certainly have CRM in the initial state, customer relationship management, and then ERP. I'm sure a lot of companies on the line have ERP at their business organization, and ERP's main focus is the pre-production and production states, you know, when you're actually building your physical product. But within those states, there are some, you know, the, the early on stage, CRM specification stages, and the production, pre-production, and end of life service, and, and the later stages of your product, there's some processes that maybe the ERP system, the CRM, and the PDM systems aren't really managing fully. Things like, you know, at the beginning of this process, process requirements, specifications, feasibility, some of the early on work that went to defining what your product's going to be. And then the ERP, the later stages, you know, maybe things like your quality process, your quality management, uh, like non-conformance processes, maybe your supplier management, doing supplier audits, that type of data really isn't being managed or you don't have good tools in place to manage those types of things. So what most companies do in that case, they add, you know, an Excel type process into the mix or maybe use uh, Outlook email 
files on a network drive and that kind of thing to try to help fill in the gaps to, to manage that type of information. Well, that's really where PLM, Fusion Lifecycle, comes in. You, you know, it can take care of these business processes, manage these business processes from, you know, the very beginning inception of a product to its very end of life. It takes care of these quality management processes, supplier management, some of the early on MPI new product introduction type processes where you're specifying what the product's going to look like. Uh, Fusion Lifecycle has purpose-built capabilities in those areas. You know, and those processes span over a larger timeline and a larger product phases than your, your vault process typically does. You know, new product introduction, again, starts very early and goes on in through the production stages of your process. Change management certainly starts very early and goes throughout the entire life cycle. And then the bottom one, the non-conformance or, you know, any quality process really, you know, is kind of a late stage process that kind of brings data back forward into the engineering realm. But if you're going to manage these processes, these, these processes all have connections to your product data. And your product data is located in Vault. So connecting that product data in Vault to the system of Fusion Lifecycle, which is managing these business processes, is what we're kind of here to show you today and how we can do that you know, in, in a new way, in a new, very efficient, seamless way. Um, really what we're going to get into here is you know, an effortless con um, connection to Fusion Lifecycle and allowing you to do collaboration and get this data spread out. You know, when data is involved, it's kind of isolated in the engineering department to a large extent. Fusion Lifecycle allows data to be spread out through your entire, you know, maybe you have multiple sites, maybe you have an external service organization or external suppliers you want to bring into your process, or even customers. Uh, Fusion Lifecycle is an easy to use system and it allows that information to be spread out and utilized, you know, by all these different departments in a variety of different ways. There's a couple different solutions we're talking about here. We're talking about Vault on the left side. You know, again, Vault is your on-premise engineering data. That's direct connection, direct integration to Inventor, AutoCAD, and your CAD authoring tools. It's located on-premise. You know, your intellectual property is protected in an on-premise server. Fusion Lifecycle is a cloud-based product. Fusion Lifecycle is just managing the metadata and the process. And the advantage of having it broken apart this way, one of the advantages of having it broken apart this way is certainly Fusion Lifecycle is easy to, easily accessible. You really just need an internet connection uh, and a web browser. You can get into Fusion Lifecycle. You can participate in these processes. It's an easier to use system that can be spread apart, spread across your entire organization, you know, far beyond just engineering. You know, and even outside of your organization, in the example shown here, you know, if you want to get your supplier involved in your change process or some of your quality process, Fusion Lifecycle allows that to happen. So why, why is Autodesk offering two solutions instead of one? I'm sure people on the phone are familiar with some of the other PLM systems out there, Windchill, Team Center, those types of things. And, and those PLM systems are really just one massive solution that's built on top of the PDM solution. So what, what's the advantage of having two different solutions instead of one? Well, really what it boils down to is taking advantage of the best functionality of each and then connecting them together to take advantage of that. On the left side, you're going to see some advantages of what Vault gives you. You know, Vault is a really efficient system within the engineering department. It protects your intellectual property because all the data is located on site. You get the advantage of on-premise performance. You know, CAD files are very large data sets. So having that data located on site gives you the, the advantage of the performance and transferring that data around is much better with an on-premise server. On the right side, Fusion Lifecycle. Fusion Lifecycle is much easier to use than Vault. You know, when, you, when you're talking about departments outside of engineering, a system like Vault can be you know, a little bit complex and difficult to use outside of the engineering group. Uh, Fusion Lifecycle is not like that. It's, it's very Simple, the interface is easy to understand. It doesn't really require much training. Um, it's cloud software, so it can be deployed to any organization, any facility that you have very easily. There's nothing to install. Uh, one of the key things, too, is Fusion Lifecycle is flexible. Vault has change management, and, and a lot of the confusion we get when we talk to our customers is, well, Vault has a change management process, and so does Fusion Lifecycle. So why are we saying that Fusion Lifecycle can play a role here? One of the reasons is, you know, Vault's change management process is kind of fixed to what it is, what it comes with out of the box, where Fusion Lifecycle allows you to define the change management process that meets your organization. Um, and it allows you to expand that change management process, you know, way beyond engineering too. Um, some of the other things that, you know, 
distribution lifecycle provides advantages are is, and one of its main purposes is sharing of information and in real time data being spread across the entire organization. Again, Vault has that information in there, uh, but it's kind of isolated within engineering where Fusion Lifecycle has that information but makes it available to anyone that's a participant in the process, makes it easier to, to digest and, and share throughout all levels of the organization. So what we're going to demonstrate in a little bit in this presentation is what, you know, is the Cool Orange integration. And the Cool Orange integration is the, the mechanism, the software tool that is going to connect Vault to Fusion Lifecycle. And where that sits is the Cool Orange integration, the Cool Orange connector is what it's called. The Cool Orange connector is a plugin into Vault and it runs within Vault's job processor. And it uses, utilizes Vault's job processor to transfer the information between the two different systems. And what type of information does it have to transfer? There's really three main functional areas that we're going to review today. The first is a new product introduction type process. You know, we're seeing here on the right hand side on the fusion lifecycle side, if you have a project or an MPI process, what the connector can do is when that process re reaches a certain stage or a certain stage gate, and that stage gate gets approved, it can automatically create a project and folder structure within the vault environment. You know, so the whole concept here is I'm, I'm going through a stage gate process, I release a certain point in my process, now we're going to, now it's the point in the process where we need to start actually modeling this product. So the vault structure gets automatically built out and created based on the fact that that project has reached, reached a certain point in its process. So now we're at that point in the process and now we're creating all of our CAD data, right? We have our drawings, our models, our assemblies, and, and all that data is being built out. But again, it's in vault, so that means that data is kind of isolated within vault and isolated to within primarily the engineering department. So the next main functional area of this Cool Orange connector is it will push that data into Fusion Lifecycle. So now I have all of this information, all the part numbers, the bill material structure, and importantly, we have the visualization files available in Fusion Lifecycle too. So a non-engineering user can go in and see the DWF versions of these models and drawings, and the, the item structure, the bill material, the where used information for all the part numbers in your system uh, based on the fact that you have the connector and it's being pushed in there on an, in an automated way. And then the last part of the process, now I have all my data in there, but now there's some additional manipulation that happens, right? Later on in the process, maybe I have a problem report that kicks off a change request or a change order. So basically, I'm going through a change management process. And we kind of mentioned before, the change management process in Vault uh, may not be quite, may not have all the functionality you're looking for. Where Fusion Lifecycle, maybe you can build out a change management process that suits your company's needs a little bit better. And if we go that route, the, the change management functionality of Fusion Lifecycle can actually drive uh, some of the vault file life cycles. So, and I'm gonna show you all these, these three different processes in more detail, but what's gonna happen is the change order will change, you know, take the models out of their release state in vault and put them into a work in process state based on the fact that the change order has reached a certain point in its process. And then as it goes through that change process, the vault files will get updated, obviously, and then ultimately get pushed back into Fusion. So again, you have the most current and latest version of all the data in Fusion Lifecycle to reference, not just in your change management process, but also in any kind of quality process or supplier approvals, or any of those additional larger scale business processes that you have in place, again, that your Fusion Lifecycle has some core capabilities. So going into a little bit more detail, uh, the first main functional area of the Cool Orange Connector is new product introduction. Uh, you know, a lot of companies have an MPI or a stage gate process in place for their products. I know my last company did, and I know Fusion Lifecycle, um, you know, really provides a nice functional benefits to organization. The MPI processes are often areas where companies struggle quite a bit because you know they're, maybe they're storing the reference information in network drives and that type of thing and, and really struggle to understand where did all these different projects stand and what levels of approvals are they at. Um, and and you know, one of the big advantages I'll we'll try to highlight here as we go through this is you know, an MPI process is, is involves personnel far outside of engineering, right? There's usually sales, marketing, manufacturing, of course, engineering, 
uh, service department, all of these groups get involved in getting a product through the process. So, you know, again, Fusion Lifecycle has good functionality to get, allow that to happen to spread this information out. But a key deliverable of a new project introduction process is the project itself, right? The, the CAD data, the, the bill material is a key deliverable. So what does the connector do to help me make this all happen in a new project introduction process? So what we're seeing here is this is the Fusion Lifecycle Interface. I'm guessing a lot of people on the phone you know, are familiar with Vault, but maybe not as familiar with Fusion Lifecycle. So what we're going to do here is we're in Fusion Lifecycle, and we're going in and we're creating a new project, product, if the case may be. And, and what we're seeing here is you know, we're entering the, the fields, the information that we need to enter to create a new project or product. And all these fields are easy to manipulate and modify you know, in your organization. You know, the, everything you're seeing in the Fusion Lifecycle environment is very easily configured and, re, and modified to meet the needs of your organization. This example is pretty simple, uh, just to keep it kind of boiled down to the bare minimum, but you see we have some fields here, and you can see in one case here, this one field, the estimated completion date is a required field. So the user's going in here and they're creating, again, they're, they're initiating a new product in the system, entering the necessary information to get this new product you know, in, the, in the database and get it kicked off. You can add some image fields if you choose, you know, here we have a paragraph field uh, down here in the system. Down here at the bottom now, we see the product team. Again, this is an area where Fusion Lifecycle, you know, is somewhat different than Bolt in the fact that, you know, a new product introduction process, as I mentioned before, often spreads across the entire organization as, as you know, far beyond the scope of just engineering. So we can have personnel that are outside of engineering assigned to approving these different stage gates. Again, we're keeping it pretty simple here to just go through this example. We have the different stage gates and the different approvers necessary for each stage gate. So now we've created the project in the system. You can see it's now assigned it a number called DEV003. You see here at the top DEV003. And it is in, it, it starts out in the, you know, in the concept gate. So right now, you know, in the concept gate and the requirements definition gate, you know, maybe, and again, this could be tailored to your organization's particular needs and how you run through this process. But in this example, what we're saying is in the concept gate and in the requirements definition gate, nobody's creating CAD data. You know, this product isn't defined enough. We're, we haven't gone through the necessary approvals to really get down to the point where we're engineering is starting to work. But once I get to the development gate, that's when now I'm going to create CAD data. Now I'm actually developing the product. I'm going to my CAD tools. I'm going to start designing this, this product. So this is where the connector kicks into place. So now we're going over to Vault. And you can see here our current Vault environment shows in our designs folder we have two different projects, Dev1 and Dev2. And what's going to happen now is now that I've reached the development gate of Dev3, the job processor kicks off. It kicks off a job. And now what's happening is the, the Cool Orange connector is automatically creating the folder structure in Vault. When we refresh the Vault environment here, you can see Dev3 has been created. And the folder structure inside of Dev3 is being created, and you can see the properties that were initially populated and, and controlled by Fusion Lifecycle, the description, the product number, the product name, the estimated completion date, that type of metadata that was in Fusion Lifecycle and is controlled by Fusion Lifecycle gets pushed in the vault, and now that folder structure is there. And now design work can begin, and it's now opened up to the personnel and engineering to create that information. So the next area of core functionality of the Cool Orange Connector is pushing the Vault information into Fusion Lifecycle. And this is a big one, right? You now your, your, your Vault files and your build material structure that you're developing in CAD exist in Vault. And now we're going to be able to get that information out of Vault and push it into Fusion Lifecycle so that Fusion Lifecycle can use that information uh, you know, way above and beyond just CAD design. You can use it in, a, in the new project introduction process as we you know, started to get into or a quality process or a supplier management, you know, maybe helping to define what suppliers are approved to release these parts, or you have a quality, you know, you have a part failure in a quality process, and that quality process obviously is assigned to a part number or a bill of material. So having that information in Fusion Lifecycle to be able to effectively manage those processes is important. And this Cool Orange Connector does it for you. And really what the way that this works, and we're going to show you this in a minute, is when you're working in Vault and you change the life cycle of the files in Vault. At a life cycle that you define, it'll push that data into, into Fusion Lifecycle for you. So I'm going to show you how that looks uh, in this system. 
So now we're in we are in our system here. You can see we've created all of our CAD data in bulk. We have it's now populated that same folder structure that we developed in our NPI process. That folder structure was developed or you know created through the connector. Now we've our engineering team has done their work and we've created our CAD assemblies. Everything's still a work in process, uh, but we're we're ready to move this forward. We're ready to get this into the system. We're we're done working on it at least for now at this point. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the lifecycle state in Bolt, and we're going to release all this information. You can see all of my new CAD files are now being pushed to release state. And in this example, they're showing the release state. But again, it, it's important to understand that this, this is very easy to be configured for your particular needs and desires. You know, it, um, we're showing release, but for another customer we're about to go live with, we've created a state called published diffusion lifecycle. So it's earlier on in the process. You know, we're pushing that data in diffusion earlier on. In this example, they're just showing it at the point where engineering is saying they're done and it's going to be released. That's at the point this data is all going to get pushed into Fusion. So now that lifecycle state is being changed to released, what's going to happen is you're going to see the job processor is going to kick off and it's going to create a bunch of jobs. And what those jobs are doing is pushing all that data, all those files and its associated build material structure into Fusion lifecycle. And then once that completes, what's going to happen is, again, now that all that information that was done in CAD is now available in Fusion Lifecycle. As you can see here, we're going into the Fusion Lifecycle environment, going to the items and bills and materials area of Fusion Lifecycle. And all those files that were in Vault are now exist as information or metadata here in Fusion Lifecycle. You can see here, you know, all of these fields down here, all this metadata fields, that was created and managed by the, the engineer, the, the CAD file itself. And that gets pushed into here. It doesn't need to be all those metadata. You can select which fields and which uh, properties from Vault get pushed into Fusion Lifecycle. It's a very easy system to manage and a very, very easy user interface to get that stuff set up and define. I want these properties from Vault to be pushed into Fusion Lifecycle. That information is there. You can also see the bill material was pushed in. This bill material is based on the uh, Inventor bomb bomb data. It's a multi-level bill material. You can see all of my parts that were in my CAD structure are now here in Fusion Lifecycle. And importantly, you can see attachments. So now there's attached file in here. In this case, you can see it's the DWF file. So I mentioned earlier in the presentation, um, you know, the data gets pushed into Fusion Lifecycle, the visualization data only. The native files don't. The native files only reside in Vault. The way the connector works is it'll push the visualization or the DWF version of the file into Fusion Lifecycle. And the advantage of this now is, of course, that this visualization file is available directly in Fusion Lifecycle. Fusion Lifecycle has a built-in visualization tool that doesn't, you know, it's built right in. It doesn't, nothing even needs to be installed. But that allows people outside of engineering to access the information, view the files, view the drawings, and be participants in the process. You know, be participants in an NPI process, be participants in a quality process, and be able to look at all of this, you know, this part number information, this bill of material information, the, the visualization of what these models actually look like, so they can understand when there's a quality problem or when they need to approve the new project introduction process, what am I approving? What am I actually looking at? And, what, and how is this going to work, you know, in our business? So, we're, again, we're showing here the built-in visualizer that's in Fusion Lifecycle. Picks off, and we're showing the 2D drawing here in this case. Uh, it highlights, obviously, the parts and the information that's on that 2D drawing associated with this model. Going into a different version, now you can see you're getting where used information too. And that where used information can be really important. Again, you're in the you're you're trying to work on a quality process and you're trying to understand, well, this part failed, but I know it's part of a bigger assembly. And if you're outside of engineering, that kind of information can be hard to come by sometimes. So Fusion Lifecycle is a very user-friendly system. It can make this type of research and this type of uh, processing information really valuable to expand throughout your organization. It really gets that data out to all aspects of your company. So the third area of core functionality that comes with the Cool Orange Connector is change management. And what this allows you to do, and again, this is, a, this is an area of, um, can be confusing to customers because there is change management built into Vault too. So why would I be looking at using a connection to a different change management tool, in this case, Fusion Lifecycle? Why would I want to use that? Well, a lot of companies that we talk to, a lot of our customers, ultimately run into some limitations with what Vault's change management process does. And, and a lot of those limitations are really due to the fact that change management you know, far exceeds just the engineering group. 
and companies want to manage that, you know, that extension into the procurement department or the suppliers themselves or manufacturing, or, you know, maybe marketing gets involved in your change process too. All those different departments, and you can build out a very specific change management process in Fusion Lifecycle that meets your particular company's needs and your particular company's workflow process. Uh, and having this Cool Orange Connector, we can use the Cool Orange Connector and, and Fusion Lifecycle's change management process to manage the files in Vault. I'm going to show you what that means in a second. Um, again, here's some the third bullet point down on the left side. You know, really helps manage things from the field. Suppliers can really be in part of your change management process with shop floor customers. It really expands the functionality of your change management to do it this, in this manner. And, and that bottom bullet point on the right side, you know, bi-directional life cycle state change. So the Quarrens connector synchronizes this. So your change management process says we're at a certain state, we're working on some data. The Quarrens connector changes that life cycle of those files in Vault for you based on the fact that that change process has reached a certain point. So what we're going to do here is we're now back in the Fusion Lifecycle, and we're going to change order. And we're going to create, pause this in a second. We're creating a new change order. And again, you know, where customers really take advantage of and really get benefit out of a system like Fusion Lifecycle is you know, change orders very rarely start, or they can, but, you know, they very rarely start as just as a change order. You know, maybe there's a return merchandise or some failed parts. Maybe there's a problem report, and that problem report generates a change request, and that change request gets approved. And now we're at the point of creating a change order. And that's, you know, Fusion Lifecycle has a lot of capabilities to ma manage all that type of workflow, manage all that flow of information, and keep that documented and tracked in a very efficient way throughout all the people that are trying to track that information. Um, you know, it doesn't isolate the change order just to engineering. It, it spreads out to all people. For this example, we're just going right to the point where we're creating a change order. But I just wanted to highlight that there's a lot of things that precede a change order typically. Uh, but we're, you know, to for demonstration purposes and to highlight the particular functionality that the connector provides, we're just jumping right into creating a change order. Again, we're you know, entering our necessary information, that title, priority, and all these fields here, you know, if you were to create a change order in Fusion Lifecycle, you know, you would change these fields around to meet your company's needs. Um, once we get down to the next section, again, here's an approval team. So we're selecting an approval team process. Again, this approval team likely is uh, people, you know, certainly within engineering, but I would suspect in most companies that it exceeds just the engineering department and spreads apart, you know, spreads out further than just engineering. Okay, so now I've created my change order in Fusion. Now I need to say what's being affected, what part numbers, what bill material, what's being affected by my change order. So I'm going into that workspace where I have my data that got pushed in in the last step. I'm adding that information now into Fusion, saying this is the assembly number or the drawing or the model that I'm changing or being affected by this change order. We're just going to, you know, keeping it simple, we're just adding one file right now, and you can see we're just in the initial state of the change order. But we're going to this next state, the engineering change order state. And by going to that state, now the Cool Orange Connector is getting kicked off again, and it's kicking off a new process in the job processor. And what's going to happen here is, you, know, you can see these, these jobs have been kicked off in the job processor. And if you recall, we released all of our data so you can see all of our data is in a release state. So by being released in bulk, obviously the user is not going to have access to modify that. But now we need to because there's a change order in place and then that data needs to be modified to accommodate the needs of the change order. And by the fact that that change order has reached a certain state, now that data needs to be moved into work in process. And that's what the Cool Orange Connector is going to do here. The Cool Orange Connector understands that, you know, Fusion Lifecycle said the change order is now at this state. And because the, the change order is now at this state, I need to change my vault files to a work in process life cycle so that the users can actually get, you know, get to work on these, these data sets. And Fusion Lifecycle would inform them that this change order is in their hands. Um, you know, there's a lot of functionality you can build into Fusion Lifecycle to make sure that, that happens. So you can see that that file is now in a work in process state, a work in progress state. So we're going to go into, you know, Inventor here and make some changes to this. You know, in this example, we're just going to mirror this whole thing just to, you know, make an obvious change to it to show you what, you know, how this all works full circle. Uh, so we're, you know, doubling the number of parts in here. We're saving that information off. I check this back in. And then we're going to update our drawing here, too. We need to update the 2D drawing, obviously, to, to make the corresponding changes on the 2D drawing. Uh, the 2D drawing needs to be pushed in the work and project state in this case. 
and then we were going to refresh this and check this back in. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to now bump the life cycle of this back to released. And this again, since everything is being bumped back to released here, if you saw that, um, bumping everything back to release state. And just like we showed you earlier in the process, when data in Vault gets bumped to, in this case, gets bumped to a released life cycle, everything gets automatically pushed into Fusion. An updated version gets pushed into Fusion life cycle. So, you know, a, you know, as soon as the job processor kicks off and processes this, all that latest information is going to be in Fusion. That's what we're going to see now. So now everything's in, in a released life cycle in Vault. And if I go back into my item that needs to be reviewed on my change order and I refresh this information and look at it again, you're going to see that my bill of materials has been updated. Uh, all of my quantities are now up to two. You can see on the right-hand side. And then I'm going to go into my visualization file here. You can see my visualization file has been updated, you know, so that I have my, you know, obviously my new drawing here with my mirrored version of it. So again, so what this is allowing us to do is allowing somebody who is a, an approver of the change order or somebody who needs to consume the information from the change order to look at and understand exactly what's happened in Vault uh, without going into Vault. All the, the bill of materials have been updated, the visualization file, the CAD information, the part number information is all up to date now based on the changes that were made in Vault, but now it's all in Fusion Lifecycle too. So now that the Fusion Lifecycle world and all the viewers in Fusion Lifecycle can utilize that you know, in their particular needs in whatever process they're working on. In this case, it is the change management process, but obviously if there's a quality process or anything else that is needed for that bill of material, that will be available to be used in that manner. So those were the three main functional areas of the Cool Orange Connector. Again, it, it creates a new product introduction process. It copy creates and the folder structure for you in Vault. It pushes the information the CAD information in Diffusion Lifecycle, the part number, the bill of material information, the visualization file information from Vault in Diffusion Lifecycle. And then for change management, it manages the lifecycle states of the Vault files based on the, the change order flowing through Fusion Lifecycle. So some frequently asked questions when we talk about the Cool Orange Connector. Uh, what is Cool Orange? What is this connector? Who are these Cool Orange? Uh, maybe a lot of people have heard of Cool Orange. Maybe not. Cool Orange has been a, a partner of Autodesk for a long time in the Vault world. They offer a few different products, the you know, Power Jobs, Power Events, or some of those products. This Cool Orange connector is a new product from them. But the important thing is there is you know an official partnership with Cool Orange to build and maintain this connector. And this, the, the intention here is that the connector will be synchronized with the release of releases of Vault uh, because it is a plug-in directly into Vault, you know, that's going to be synchronized with the releases of Vault uh, as it comes out and, and this Cool Orange connector, the Fusion Lifecycle Vault connector from Cool Orange will be maintained in that manner. Uh, cool Orange has certainly they have their own help screens and information. They also have some support pages. So again, you know, while it's not a, an Autodesk direct product, there is a tight relationship with Autodesk and Cool Orange and and the support information and additional information about the connector can be accessed directly from Coolorns themselves. Some common questions that we get about this. Uh, on the left column, the yes, questions that are answered, yes. Do customers need Vault Professional? Yes, you do. And currently, the Coolorns connector is available for Vault Professional 2019 and Vault Professional 2020. Next line item down is uh, something Relative, almost brand new. It happened, I think, earlier this week. It was officially released, and that is the fact that uh, Autodesk is now offering bundled subscriptions for Vault and Fusion Lifecycle. And it's a very advantageously priced bundled uh, subscription for those two softwares. Um, some other questions down the left-hand side. Um, you know, the, the, the three in the middle, the three cans in the middle there, can customers configure states for upload? Yes. I mentioned you know, in the example videos that we showed there, you know, the data is getting uploaded on a release date, but we've done it differently where we really, we push it up in the Fusion on a published date or maybe on the in-review state you want to push it up. Point is, is, is it's flexible. You know, the, the next one, couple down says, can the mapping be adjusted? Yes, it can be adjusted. And it's easy to adjust. It's easy to say, you know, I want this data pushed in when 
the fusion or when the vault life cycle reaches an in reduced state or, or whatever the case may be for your organization. Um, is ownership, the next couple down, ownership of the data clearly defined? Yes, it is. So it's nice in the fact that the user in Vault, when they push the data or they, they move the life cycle of the data in Vault and that data gets pushed into Fusion, their name is still associated with it in the Fusion world. Uh, it's not some generic uh, job processor type ID. It does keep their the user ID information associated with the data itself. Um, and there is an opportunity to do some piloting and testing if you want. And then there is an app in the App Store, and that app in the App Store is referring to the Fusion Lifecycle world. The Fusion Lifecycle environment has apps in the App Store. They're all free. And uh, Autodesk has added pre-configured apps to you know, get the starting point of the connection from Vault to Fusion Lifecycle using this connector, get you down that path a little quicker. On the right-hand side, answers to no. Does it work with Vault Basic? No, we kind of answered that, I guess, on the left side a little bit too. But just to reiterate, if you have Vault Basic today, the connector does not work with just Vault Basic. Um, next line item down, does it integration copy all the data to Fusion Lifecycle in the cloud? And, th and this is important. A lot of companies don't want their intellectual property, their native intellectual property in the cloud. And I think you saw in the, the demonstration, it was pushed in the DWF files only. It was not pushed in the native IPT files, IDW files into Fusion Lifecycle, just the visualization files. Uh, customers don't have to open their firewall. They do not need to use items in Vault either. I know a lot of customers have questions about Vault Professional and whether they would need to use items in Vault Professional or not. You do not need to use uh, Vault Professional. And for companies that maybe have been investigating this type of solution for some time, maybe you're familiar with Jitterbit. Jitterbit is a middleware that Autodesk also supports to help connect Fusion Lifecycle to other systems. Um, and, and this solution does not need or does not use Jitterbit at all. Uh, Jitterbit is still a viable middleware when you're connecting Fusion Lifecycle to things like ERP and other business systems, but when it comes to connecting Vault and Fusion Lifecycle, you really only need this new uh, cool orange connector. Um, you know, some of the things, the items in orange, you do not have to purchase other cool orange products to make this work. It's a single product from cool orange, what was demonstrated today. Uh, native files will not be copied to cloud, and you know it does not connect to ECOs in Vault. So really, the intention but the way the connector works is you will manage your ECO process directly in Fusion Lifecycle. And the CAD data and the CAD data management still resides in Vault, but the ECO process is, is managed fully in Fusion Lifecycle. Um, and does not at this point in time connect to ERP. I mentioned that's where something like Jitterbit would come into place if you want to connect Fusion Lifecycle to other business systems above and beyond Vault. So uh, thank you for your time. If there are any other questions, feel free to reach out to either your Synergis um, account manager, or um, if you don't have an account manager or just have a general question, you can reach out to, to me. My extension is 3046. Um, so feel free, to, feel free to reach out. And um, yeah, thanks everyone for joining, and, and you know, hope to talk to you soon. Have a good holiday.